Good Sunday evening, everybody, from the News Channel 3 backyard. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik, a little bit out of frame here, but decided to give you a little bit better view as to what the real story is, and that's up there. That is the supermoon. If you haven't seen it yet, good opportunity to get outdoors for tonight and take a look around. There are a few clouds, as you can tell, kind of drifting on through for this evening, but otherwise not looking again at a lot of cloud cover. So again, catching a little bit of some clear skies out across parts of the area, at least for early on. Again, this does not look to be anything really major spectacular. It's not going to be like several sizes larger. It's not going to be, again, so bright that you can read by it right in the middle of the nighttime, but it is going to be a supermoon. It is going to be just a little bit closer on there. There have been a few of them this year. May have to kind of cut back on the amount of times that we use that particular term because what that means basically is this is just a little bit closer to the earth it's going to be within about a quarter million miles of the earth and that is why we're calling it a supermoon because it appears just a little bit of fraction of a bit larger on there so that's mainly what we're looking at again for the evening hours into tonight decent amounts of cloud cover out there here and there but that's about all that we have taking place across much of the mid-south you can see again decently clear few clouds around here and there, but otherwise not really doing too bad across much of the Mid-South. Rest of the area tonight, again, good clear skies across much of the area. The view back across the river toward Big River Crossing, as you can see over my shoulder there. Good visibility for tonight. Not really expecting to see too much in the way of fog or any problems like that. There could be some more patchy frost into the Mid-South tonight, and that may be a bit of a problem. Coming up later on this week, we do have some better views of the International Space Station. Not by much, but at least we will be seeing at least a little bit better conditions out there. Now tonight, the Tiangong 2 space station has already passed overhead, went upwards to around the bright star Vega in the constellation of Lyra the Harp. Tomorrow, as we go into tomorrow morning, Tiangong 1 will be visible into and around the very early morning hours, about a quarter to six tomorrow. There could be some clouds out there, and that's going to be about the brightest thing in the sky. It'll be going from the north uh, western horizon, very close to the northern sky around the North Star, and then going back around, setting and fading by the northeastern sky. Now, this one is the first Chinese space station. Tian Gong means heavenly palace, and again, the first one on this. It has been abandoned. It is a coming close to becoming out of control. It is still in Earth orbit. Its orbit is degrading, so this station is going to crash at some point in time. Not immediately, and it's not an imminent threat to anything on the ground at this point in time. Remember that 70% of the Earth's surface is water, so we don't have a great deal of land surface for this thing to really be affecting, so the odds are in our favor on that, and hopefully it can be controlled at least a little bit to be brought down in the right position and the right place, hopefully over an ocean somewhere where nothing is going to be hurt when it comes back down again. Uh, I'd like to know more about this. Stay tuned. We'll bring you more details coming up later on. Now, its sister craft, which was just launched a few weeks ago, this is going to be visible tomorrow more, tomorrow evening, very much on the early side, at just about maybe 5.30 or so, and afterwards, and this one also going across the sky from west to east, should be able to see this very easily and decently with, again, some clouds out there tomorrow. Now, there may be more clouds toward tomorrow evening as a new storm system heads through, and better chances of, again, a little bit of rain showers, so this may be a little bit more difficult to see than tonight, but at least you'll be able to give it a shot anyway. Where is the International Space Station? I've gotten some emails on that and people having questions about where they can see the very bright space station passing overhead. Well, you can see it. Picking your dates and times, you should be able to take a look for it, but unfortunately, over the next several days, you're going to have to get up very early in the morning. and We're talking like quarter to five in the morning to be able to see this passing overhead. So you might be able to see this. It's going to be decently bright and it is going to be passing over parts of the Mid-South area, but unfortunately, it's not going to be any time during the evening evening hours, so you will be able to see it. You're just going to have to get up a little bit earlier to be able to take a look at it. Likewise, with Iridium flares, there'll be a few of those out there as well, and you can get that from this website. That's heavens-above.com, and you can get more details on what's going on out there. All you have to do is just check out heavens-above.com, plug in your address, your town and uh, your city and town and city and state and you'll be able to tell what's going on including international space station flyovers coming up later on this week again by tomorrow night at this time 
and early Tuesday morning could be some rain showers out there. So we might see again a few interferences with watching the stars into Monday, Tuesday. Next one after that, another storm system coming our way by about Friday night into Saturday. That one has the potential of bringing a little bit more rainfall to the mid south, and I will gladly give up an interruption in stargazing to get a little bit more rainfall in here because we've got some very dry conditions out across the mid south, and we have to be very careful with anything involving fire or flame. Matter of fact, if it smells a little bit smoky out there today. There's a very good reason for that because some of the fires over eastern Tennessee, northern Georgia, that smoke has been drifting its way into the mid south. It hasn't exactly been a smog situation, but it has been noticeable, and that's going to cut down on the visibility by just a little bit until the atmosphere gets cleared out by just a little bit. Rest of the week again, clouds coming and going shouldn't be too bad. We'll be bringing you more updates on what you can see in mid south skies coming up as we go throughout the course of the next several days. So Keep it tuned to WREG.com slash weather and also to my YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, yeah, Google Plus, a whole bunch of others out there. You'll be able to figure it out out there. I'm on just about every single service there is. And we'll bring you more details as to what you can see in the night skies with our latest addition to our video blog collection. This is called Skyblog 3, live and direct from the News Channel 3 backyard on the helipad and just very close to Big River Crossing on the bridges. I'm meteorologist Austin Onyx. Stay tuned to News Channel 3 throughout the rest of the week for more details on what you can see in the night sky in our astronomy blog, Skyblog 3. And remember, when it comes to anything involving science or the night sky, keep looking up.